Hello, my name is Eva Helps with Siler Design Solutions. Today we're going to take a look at the analysis tab within the surface properties dialog box, including how to show slope analysis both on the surface and within the legend. There's a lot of different reasons you might want to use different types of analysis to see the natural drainage of the land. Maybe you're creating lots within a subdivision like shown here. We're actually going to turn these off though or to find the best location for a building, or best route for a construction road, or just to help design and construct a drainage system. Or maybe you just wanna study the patterns and directions of water movement. Or if you hover over the surface, you see it's set on the two foot and 10 foot contours. So knowing that, you can see that there's quite a bit of steep slopes all within this parcel. So if you select the surface, you can see surface properties is either up in the ribbons tab or if you right click, you can also go to surface properties. So in here, you can see um, the surface style that is on there, this is existing ground surface. You can edit that if you wanted to. There is summaries on borders, contours, the way they're shown within the definitions tab you can go to build or data operations and see how that surface was built to view and here we're going to go to the analysis tab so many different types of analysis that we can use we are going to start with slopes so if you select that you'll see there is the opportunity to create a legend of the data we are going to use um, and you can put that there you can also edit it using that edit um, button to the right. But we're going to go ahead and go down to ranges. We are going to select the number of ranges we wish to show and hit the down arrow. Once you do that, you will see there are minimum, maximum slope and colors here. You can go ahead and change the slopes to the different ranges you are hoping to see. So you can change even the minimum slope as long as it's within range. We're going to go ahead and change that to a 0.6. And maybe we want to see up to 10% here. I'm just going to change these into four specific ranges. So we can see the different so we can see the different range groups. You can also select the different colors. Maybe you want it to look a little more drastic so you can visualize it better on the screen. Just gonna go ahead and choose those colors. So if we hit apply, you'll notice nothing behind us in the background here changes. You need to go back into, for any of the analysis types, you need to go back into the information tab to the surface style, click edit, go to the display tab, and then come down to the appropriate analysis that you used. You see all the different types in here, elevations, directions, slopes, slope arrows, watersheds. We chose slope, so I'm gonna turn that on. Go ahead and click apply. And now you can see in the background that it has changed our surface and now you can see all of the different slope ranges we created. So if we wanted to, as I mentioned when we were setting up the different analysis type, you can add a legend in case somebody needs to see the different areas of the different ranges of slope. So you would go up here, you select the surface, go up to add legend, and you'll see the different type of analysis. We chose slope. Maybe you'd want to do static if you were trying to just get a snapshot in time of what was happening in the surface, but we're gonna go ahead and choose dynamic for our purposes. It's asking you to select the upper left corner of where you want the table to go. So we will put it here and if you zoom in, you can see the table gives us the information of the range number, which slopes it goes from, the min, the max slope, the area, and the color that's represented on the screen on the surface. So that is a quick overview of 
how you would show slope analysis on the surface. If we right click on the surface again, go back to surface properties, I'm going to go ahead and go into the surface tile and turn off those slopes and then head back over to the analysis tab. Here we are going to choose watersheds this time. So again, you'll have the availability to create a legend using the watershed that we apply. You can merge different depressions into a single drainage targets by choosing a minimum average depth. We're going to go ahead and ignore that for now. So if you look down here where these are applied, you will see there are the type, the drain info, description. You can change the hatch pattern here. You can change line types, line width. You can select the color of the hatching as well in case you need to represent that differently. So you could change that to green if you want um, and you can see different colors and styles of the hatching patterns so that they will display differently on the surface. I'm going to go ahead and change this back to red. If you select this light bulb here, you will see there's the different types of types of watershed displays we have. You could select them, turn them all off. Maybe you just want to see the depressions so you can see where those will merge had you chosen a minimum average depth. Maybe you just want to see the flat areas. You can see where the best spot for a building or a building pad might go. So if we hit apply, you'll notice it did apply the fact that we turned off the slopes but it didn't apply the watershed. So go back to surface properties into that information tab. You'll want to select the surface tile again. So we need to turn that layer on for the correct analysis. So this time it was a watersheds. Go ahead and apply that. You can see it pop up there in the background and you'll see the different areas, different types of watershed areas. You could also select the surface and add a legend. <clears throat> so again, which type? We went with watersheds. We're going to stick with dynamic again, asking for you for the upper left corner to place that legend table. And then here you can see the information that the default style provided. You go back into surface properties. Again, this is where if you chose the watersheds, you can see the table. This is where you would go to edit those legends. You have the opportunity to change the way they display, the types of text. You can add or columns to display different kinds of information. I'm going to go ahead and cancel out of this though. and turn off the watershed layer for that surface style. So that was a quick look at how you can represent your surface using the slope analysis, using the watershed analysis. As you saw, there was other kinds in there. The elevation analysis, maybe you want to see the way it looks here going back into surface properties, go to the elevations, choose the number of ranges to apply. And if you wanted, you could change your min max elevations. Don't forget to go back into the surface style to the display tab and turn on that elevations layer. So it actually does display on the surface. And there you see the trend of the surface using elevations. Each elevation group is colored differently. I'm going to go ahead and turn that back off. The elevations.
and hopefully that gave you a glimpse into some different analysis tools to represent the surface and see it in different ways. So this is a surface that I grabbed from InfraWorks and imported into Civil 3D along with the road alignments. A little side note, if you're looking for a simple way to look at an existing area for a conceptual or preliminary plan and want to know more about the contouring or existing features, Autodesk has a few great tools out there, InfraWorks being one of them. It probably took me about five minutes to hop into InfraWorks, create the model, and bring the surface into Civil 3D by going into Insert, Open InfraWorks Model, and just inserting the surface and the alignments. And then I just used, uh, created a corridor real quick to represent those roads using the basic lane assembly, just so we had something to represent that road. So it is super simple to get a basic idea of what's going on there. Feel free to reach out if you have any questions about that or any of the other tools you can use or any of this slope analysis or other analysis of the surface tools. You can email us at cadtechnical at silerins.com or you can check us out at www.siler-ds.com. Check out our blogs, services, training, software we offer. See how we can help you. So thanks for watching.